Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. It's weather in five, five days and five minutes, and you're looking at a loop of Hurricane Dorian, uh, and uh, it is uh, every bit of Category 4 hurricane here. Top winds are 145 miles an hour on the 8 a.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. It was at 25.8 north, 73 west, and moving on a westerly course at about 12 miles per hour. That westerly course uh, has taken hold uh, a bit a bit sooner. Uh, it, it has an opportunity here to continue westward for a while. Uh, th there are a, a lot of subtleties still going on in the forecast. Uh, you may have heard uh, from overnight uh, that uh, weather models have uh, increased the odds of Dorian turning uh, before reaching the Florida coast, and I certainly can concur with that uh, that notion. But I would be really cautious here. There's there's a lot of fine tuning and a lot of subtleties in this in this particular setup, uh, and that requires us to keep a, a a very close view of developments as we go through the day. First off, we have a new reconnaissance aircraft in Dorian, and uh, at the moment uh, we are seeing uh, the we've seen the first flight pass. Uh, the lowest pressure that the plane re, uh, found was 947 millibars. And looking at the wind barbs uh, that uh, are plotted here, uh, it does look as if it, uh, the plane did find winds uh, between 113 and 137 knots. So that 140, 145 mile per hour uh, wind uh, in the advisory uh, certainly um, um, seems justified here. Now the plane's going to fly up. You can see where the plane icon is. It's flying up north and it's going to come in and make a second pass. So it's able to judge where the new the center has, of course, moved in the time that it makes this trip. So it can put it on a plot and we can see uh, the motion. Uh, the eye looks like it is uh, just shy of 26 north and uh, right on 73 west at this point. One of the things we have noticed, too, on sunrise, that the eye has become a bit cloud-filled. So we may be undergoing uh, one of these eye wall replacement cycles. What happens is the hurricane storms can't intensify forever. They have these bursts of intensification. The, uh, thunderstorm, the thunderstorms form around the eye. The eye becomes extremely well-defined. And then at some point, those thunderstorms mature and peak out, and they start to degrade. So uh, the uh, the engine, the mechanism, those st storms break down, and then because of all the rotation and the and, and the energy and the outflow and the inflow and everything else that's at work, you get a new eye that develops, and then that gradually takes over. And that replacement cycle can take uh, as little as six hours. Sometimes it can take a day or so to play out. So while uh, the uh, eye wall is being replaced. Uh, the uh, storm uh, pressure tends to fluctuate a bit, tends to weaken a bit, and then it could start off, start into another round of strengthening. Uh, given the ocean water temperatures, it certainly is possible. So we're seeing Dorian coming westward. Obviously, there are no issues today. The Bahamas, the northern Bahamas, under a hurricane warning. In the meantime, our weather here in the northeast looking fine and dandy for the start of the holiday weekend. We have a little bit of patchy high cloudiness in some places streaming out of the Ohio Valley, but much of that should dissipate as we go through the day. And here's a, here it is on the wide view. This is really all about uh, the uh, ridge that's out in the Atlantic. And you can see it right here, this finger of clear skies in the Atlantic going back uh, into, the, into the southeast coast and to Florida. That is creating an east to west flow. And Dorian is at the moment responding to that. Uh, there's also an upper ridge that is extending out from the southwest that is trying to build eastward. There is a gap, a weakness in between. You also have the northern jet stream riding along with its own disturbances. And every once in a while, you get those disturbances to drop into the east. And they uh, drop down south, far enough south, uh, for a day or two. And then they pull up north. That's been the pattern uh, throughout the entire summer. There isn't a whole lot happening from the standpoint of precipitation, by the way. We're bone dry here on the radars from North Carolina to Maine. So we're looking good. So uh, as far as our weather is concerned, uh, this uh, Saturday is going to feature uh, partly sunny to a, a, some places, mostly sunny skies will be in the upper 70s to low 80s, and no rain is in the forecast. And that covers you from Maryland to southern New England. There might be some warmer middle 80s down in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. For Sunday, we're looking at partly sunny skies, maybe more clouds inland, and some inland areas in eastern and central Pennsylvania could see 
some scattered showers or possibly even uh, uh, an isolated thunderstorm that can't be ruled out. But for every place else, uh, from Maryland to southern New England, I think it's no worse than partly sunny with no rain. For, uh, for Monday, Labor Day, uh, this might be the one day where we stand a chance to see a shower or storm later in the day because a weak front is coming through. So we'll have partly sunny skies ahead of it, upper 70s to mid 80s, and we'll watch for a shower or storm. Tuesday and Wednesday look like two warm days with temperatures uh, in the uh, low and middle 80s, and there is the possibility of some showers later on Wednesday with a cold front coming through. And that is going to be an important cold front down the road if, if Dorian makes the turn. So here's just really fast. We'll show you the jet stream, uh, the pieces that come together with that ridge coming in off the Atlantic, Dorian uh, heading for the Bahamas, and then the ridge weakens. You get a, a bit of a trough here early on Monday that dips down. The southern part of the jet stream uh, is uh, down into North Carolina, according to the GFS, and that pulls Dorian toward the north and away from Florida. If that's if that holds, uh, we uh, I, I want to see a few cycle model cycle runs before I'm convinced of this. That trough doesn't pick it up and kick it out to sea. The upper high kind of builds back a bit, and Dorian moves north northwest to north until a second short wave. And this is with the cold front that I'm speaking about for Wednesday. You're going to have a cold front approaching, and Dorian's going to try to move along to the northeast uh, on the uh, with the cold front uh, supplying the alleyway for it. If this times out this way, we're going to see Dorian basically straddle the Carolinas and then move on northeastward offshore with little impact uh, north of uh, Chesapeake Bay and the Delmarva Peninsula as far as rain is concerned. But that's a long down ways down the road. We still haven't really resolved the short range issues regarding Dorian and its ultimate impacts to Florida and the Bahamas. We're going to have a live stream on YouTube at 11.30 Eastern time on my YouTube channel. We'll have the new GFS coming in. We'll have the new NAM model. And we'll have a few other things to look at. So to go to my YouTube channel, it's just called Joe Choppy. And subscribe to it if you subscribe to it, which is for free with your Gmail at, uh, account. If you have one, uh, you can uh, participate in the chat. And we'll have website posts and updates uh, throughout the day as we watch Dorian. But at least for our weather from eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England for the rest of for this holiday weekend, for the most part, it's looking pretty good.